right. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Man Up Already podcast. And as always, super pumped to have you on here. Man, I I just get excited every time we put out an episode because I know we're just going to bring it. It's going to be a great podcast. we got a great guest again today. It's going to be awesome. Want to make sure that we keep mentioning the Man Up Already growth conference this year, June 10th, Port St. Lucie, Florida, 9 to 2. It's going to be an absolutely unbelievable event. If you are a man, get your ass to the Man Up Already Growth Conference. We uh, It's for men only. We're going to open it up for boy, uh, men and boys. Eight, I just say this, for men, age 14 on up, okay? The speaker lineup is ridiculous. Go to manupalready.com for details. You can see the speakers on there. You can get on the emailing list as we uh, you know, bring more um, information to the event. We'll have a ticket link up there soon, but it's going to be awesome. Um, June 10th, Port St. Lucie, Florida, the Man Up Already Growth Conference. If you are a man, I would ask you this question. What major, major life-altering event do you have on your calendar for 2023 or even better yet, the first half of 2023 and uh, make it the Man Up Already Growth Conference? Um, uh, you know, Everything now is on manupalready.com, all the social links, things that you can do to connect with us. But connect with us, right? Like that, that's the whole point. Open up conversation, get them, read the man up already book. You know, I just reread the book just to, to make sure it's, it's, this is its fifth year anniversary. It's still relevant more so than ever. People are um, getting more aware of that book. So there's a lot of exercises in there that I think are incredibly important. And it's funny because, you know, energy attracts energy, like attracts like, and that's how I met our guest today. I connected with her on LinkedIn and when, when we met, you know, what we like to do a virtual coffee, I realized that I was speaking to someone who was on the same mission that we were on, just gearing it towards working with women. And when I read um, her book, I was like, oh, th- this is amazing. This is like the same book for women that Man Up Already is for men. So uh, I knew um, I wanted to have her on the podcast. I want her to tell her story and um, what she's up to, because I think Um, There is great, not only synergy, but relevance, and it'll be a great podcast episode. So our guest today is Sheila Vasky. She is the author of Powerful Mind, Powerful Soul. She is a best-selling author, a former CEO. She'll tell her story as she built a company. She's a mother of two, and she's a sought-after speaker and coach. She is on a mission to stop the epidemic of depression and anxiety in our society and wants to teach people how to find self-worth and understand their purpose. Now, if you know anything about what we talk about here on the Man Up Already podcast, which you do because you're an active listener, then you know created purpose and and created for purpose is a major, major, major tenant of the Man Up Already mindset. So finding a like-minded person who's out there doing the same things in the world, wanted to have her on uh, on the podcast as a guest. So please welcome our guest today, Sheila Vasky. Sheila, welcome to the Man Up Already podcast. Thank you very much for having me, John. I'm excited to talk with you today. Can't wait to share what we we want to share. Yeah, it's, um, you know, in the intro, I was talking, um, you know, how you and I connected and it was this instant, like, we're on, we're on the same path. And then, you know, we, we were reading each other's book at the same time, <laughs> saying to each other, like, you wrote the female version of my book or I wrote the male version of yours. Like, it's pretty funny. I mean, really, honestly, even down to the exercises, it was kind of bizarre. <laughs> and I just kept getting goosebumps because it was so synchronistic. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I, I read, obviously, you know, some highlights in, in the intro. You wrote, your book is Powerful Mind, Powerful Soul. So I want to, and that really is the theme for your brand and your, what you call an experience. So let's dive into that. Where did the name come from? Why the name? Like, you know, just kind of give us that story. Sure. Um, Well, it's been a calling. So I felt chosen and called to wake up the world in which we are living in right now. So it's been a battle for what I perceive to be a world of um, living in a matrix and um, good versus evil. Let's take politics out of the equation. At the end of the day, I feel called to spread this message 
on how powerful your mind is, mm. how powerful your soul is. And when you are one with that and one with yourself, the energy that you radiate into the universe will overpower that negativity. And you can create the life you want and heal yourself in every aspect when you are fully tapped in and know how much power you possess in your mind. And then that, again, because it comes down to energy. So your mind, your soul controls your mind, your mind controls your soul. And then it's the energy we project and radiate into the universe as we go about our day. And you can either be a magnet to good things or bad things, but we're all energy. Everything's energy. It's so fun. It's like, literally, it's the same conversation same message it's it's just funny I, I'm, I'm listening to it come out of your mouth and i'm like i've said that i've said that <laughs> this is awesome so and i remember the first time i had learned the concept that everything is energy mm -hmm. um and it's you know back I, I think it was 2006 or 2007 when the secret came out was when a lot of people were first really exposed yeah to you know the quantum realm and just kind yeah. of all of that idea of 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 just energy and, and, and what it means, but you discovered that really early on in life through, you know, something that you went through from a health standpoint, you know, if I know your story properly. So, mm -hmm. um, I love, right. That you, your brand is powerful mind, powerful soul, because that is so true, but let's go back into that story. Um, when you were younger on how sure. you learned that and, and, and really made some transformations in your life. Well, I have to say, I'll talk about that in one second, but the one thing I do want to touch on is that I did it then, but I didn't real, I didn't realize how powerful it actually really was. I did it mindlessly, I have to say, and it wasn't as I got older to actually realize what that really means and how powerful it actually is. But what I will say is the life changing moment for me was when I was 14 and my health, uh, my health teacher in high school said one day, and I, I just remember even sitting in the class and he said, today, we're going to talk about the power of the mind. Mm. And he said, what you give power to has power over you. And he talked about how powerful our minds are. And I was diagnosed with a very rare skin disorder when I was 11. And um, long story short, I was given five years to live. At 11? So, at 11. Wow. Yeah. It started at 10 and nobody could figure out what was wrong with me. So going from doctor to doctor to doctor, nobody could figure it out. And um, so one, the final doctor that we kept went to basically told my mom, um, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what she has, but I can tell you it's not good. And she's not going to live long. So at that moment, my mom's, you know, obviously reached out to her family and her friends and was like, what do I do? And they, someone suggested to go to Boston Children's Hospital. So we did. And, um, it, you know, had to wait to get there. But when I did go on the very first day, I was seen by many specialists and doctors, and they had basically kind of come to an agreement that they were going to diagnose me with scleroderma. And scleroderma was very rare. It's very rare to get it as a child. It's a very rare disease, actually. And no normally it hits women in their 30s, 40s, and 50s. Um, to get it as a child was very rare. Um, so, you know, they just said, you'll have, cause at that time I couldn't make a fist. I could only like close it like, you know, this much. Mm. And my arm was super shiny. It looked like I was burned in a fire. Um, it just looked really horrible. And so anyway, of course I was a case study at Boston children's hospital. And, <clears throat> um, so we lived with this for three years and the function of my hand got worse and worse and what have you. But that day that that teacher said that to me it just it just hit me that you know what i went home that day and just said no longer giving this disease any of our attention we're not calling it anything we're just not gonna no more doctors no more medicines no more trials no more studies we're done um we are just gonna live a normal life i will have function of my hand again and nobody puts a sentence on my life so because at the end of the day every disease has a label and when that label is given to you, again, 
if someone, if the doctor says you have six months to live, most likely you're going to live six months or less right. because, because that's you what they it. told you because yep. you yep. believe it. Yep. Yeah. So um, honestly, I just said, I'm taking control and I started squeezing a tennis ball. And then before you know it, I had function of my hand again. They told me I had to be left-handed. I would never have function of my right hand. And um, then I joined a gym and yeah, um, within six months, it, it stopped. It got better. Actually, the appearance of it got better and I had full function of my hand and um, it's never gotten worse. Um, it does come along with a lot of internal stuff, you know, autoimmune issues, but otherwise I just turned 50 this year. So <laughs> yeah, the 50 club. Yeah. And I love it. <laughs> oh no. 50 is badass. I'm owning it. Yeah. Well, and just to digress for a minute, right. Cause I think I posted yeah. this somewhere, right. This ain't your mom is 50, right? Like 50, yeah. 50, when we were, this is you know, the new 50. that's exactly right. Right. Like <laughs> it's, it ain't your mom is 50. Gen X is doing 50 at a level that we right. have not seen before. Right. Yeah. Like it's, yeah, that's, so, but all right. So, and, and it's good to, to kind of to, to, even though we, you know, went off a little, a little moment there, but yeah. when you were told, I mean, if you're 50, then this is the 1970s or eighties when you're, it's the eighties, early eighties, when you're told, mm -hmm. Hey, you've got, you know, a couple of years, five years to live or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Like there's no internet. There's no, like what your doctor said was real, right? Mm -hmm. Like it, it like where we were getting our knowledge wasn't the way it is today. So there's no, there. it's either somebody else giving a different opinion or you're living and dying by this professional's word. What's amazing to me is that a health teacher makes a statement mm -hmm. and the power of the mind that you bought into, right? Yeah. Because the proof outside of it wasn't working, right? right. And you right. bought into that statement and just created an entirely different reality. I think I just... I love stories like that because it really is true. What you think yeah. about, you bring about. Yeah. You manifest what you believe and conceive in your own mind. Yeah. And so life since then has just been unbelievably easy and great because you can just create <laughs> at any time, right? Like it's just a yeah. freaking, you know, fairy tale afterwards because, because you yeah. know, right? Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. I've been perfect ever since. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Hell to the no. No. <laughs> no. You know, no. but before, and I want you to talk kind of, kind of, you know, your story afterwards, but um, I think, you know, we've talked about this before. I'm a big Matrix fan and yeah. I love the last one that came out because he forgot. You know what I mean? Like, here's this, have you seen that movie at all? I'm going to be really honest. Never watched it. None of them? No. Oh my gosh, you, you need to binge watch the entire Matrix I just series. get nerd like I'm an empath. And when I see things, I feel things. And I don't want to feel the things I see. Gotcha. So I I protect myself in a bubble. I Okay, I got it. Phenomenal. Yeah. Like the reality of those movies is really, really incredible. But basically, here's this character who 20 years later is back almost where he started because he forgot. Yeah. He believed mm -hmm. You, you know, a new set of paradigms and, and all that. So um, that's why I make the joke, you know, once you learn to create, you know, life is just incredible after. No. no. So so kind of bring us through your story, because I know you've just seen cycles of adversity and applying the things that you teach and, and all of that. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it's it it's really never been easy. And whose life is at the end of the day? I mean, we're constantly we have free will, but we're always tempted. There's always um, something we're going through at some point in our life. And it really is the thoughts that we put in our mind. Um, I didn't really tap into the gifts I have up until later on in life. But there were several times that I should have died and not be here. And I refused to accept the sentences. I refused to accept the labels and the sentences and... You know, um, and I think that people should listen to their bodies because your body is so perfect and it tells you everything you need to know. And when something's not feeling right, that's a time to check in and um, discover why. So that's really, so I would say, I don't know when it was, but 
Um, I was married twice. Um, I built successes and lost them all. I believed this pattern of I'm not worthy of success and success is different for everybody. So that's another thing. Like what does success look like for you? But for some reason, I had this belief that money was the root of all evil. I know the reason, but I subconsciously have kept that in my mind, you know, and every time I would build something, it would go. And um, I've stopped that cycle now too. But awesome. life is evolving and you're healing and evolving constantly. And it's through the hard things that we have to go through that we learn the lessons if we choose to. Yeah. What, there's so much in here. Um, I got to keep track of it. Um, <laughs> the first is, what do you say to the idea that um, throughout life, like underneath there, there are, there's, there's traumas and there's things that are like we we keep repeating patterns right mm -hmm. and there are some very real and deep beliefs that at the subconscious level that kind of mm -hmm. you know attack or override or sabotage what whatever um mm -hmm. even though on the on the conscious level we think everything is is working in our favor so, mm -hmm. so. yeah um what was the question? I'm sorry. Well, just what are your thoughts on uh, on that? You know, because I I think one thing that I've learned in life is right, like trauma is always there. Trauma doesn't always. go away, right? It doesn't no. go away. It doesn't disappear. You, you know, so mm -hmm. maybe speak on that because you've seen it, your fair yeah. share of it in life, and 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 yeah. how you deal with it, navigate it, use it, whatever. You know, I just would love your thoughts on that. Yeah. Um. Honestly, I thought that I I thought that. I had healed so many versions of my trauma, honestly, I, I, I did, I, you know, but again, we didn't, and I didn't, I honestly, I, okay, so I'm, I'm losing my track, but so I had a jewelry company before I wrote the book. I did that and birthed that for nine years. It was my, it was guided to me. God gave me all the signs, the synchronicities. I, literally I'm doing now exactly what I did then and just like not really sure what it's going to be but I would be I would just feel or be called to do whatever it is and and I discovered that I was a healer through my energy and I created this jewelry line and accessory line to inspire and heal the world and that was my vision and we were really close to finally reaching the empire that I wanted to build and COVID happened and the pandemic happened and it was over, you know, and I lost it all again. You said, plan and that was the moment <laughs> that I won't call it, but <laughs> I love it. Um, anyway, that was the moment that I grieved for the very first time in my life. Mm. And that was about three or four years ago. And that was the moment where I'm like, I lost what, what, whatever it was three years ago. I lost my identity. I was ang so angry at God. I was um, really angry and it took me a while to heal from that. And I, I, I didn't grieve. I don't think I ever grieved any of my traumas. That being said, once I started this journey, I'm like, okay, I'm better. Like I healed that. And guess what? I didn't. And it was still buried in there, but it was other traumas. So, I, I mean, I think we're all, we should be, I'm always working on becoming the best version of myself. I mean, at the end of the day, we're human. We make mistakes. We're not perfect. We're so imperfectly perfect. And we try to do the best we can, or some do, some don't, but I'm trying to do the best I can. And the person who wrote the book, that book, writing the book brought out so many traumas mm -hmm. that yep. I didn't know were there. I mean, um, right? Oh yeah, And yeah, you relive a lot of stuff that you think you bury, but you don't. It lives subconsciously in your mind. You have to heal those things. And healing comes with pain. But I keep quoting this everywhere I'm, I'm going is every storm ends with a rainbow or, you know, there's light at the end of the tunnel. I mean, you can use all the cliches you want, but at the end of the day, you have to go through something to learn the lesson and to heal something. Yeah. And I love what you just said, right? Healing involves pain. Yeah, it does. 
you have to face it. And I think as humans, we don't want to. Correct. Our our ego and our our minds don't want to go there. So we block it out. And 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 on the other side of that quote unquote pain is the rainbow. I love, you know, it, peace. it right. There lies peace. It's so um it's good. You know, I I I would like our listeners to to really understand that on I remember when I was in, you know, the band that I was in, I wrote a song called After Dark, There's Always Dawn. Yeah. You know, because I was um, in my young 20s facing something that was pretty traumatic at the time. And yeah. that's the song that came out um, of that moment. And and it really is true, right? It, it's going to be dark. It's going to be nasty. It's going to be painful. But what's on the <laughs> other side of that? And keeping the focus on that. Mm-hmm. right? Knowing you're going to get there. Right. I mean, I even have goosebumps. It's like, yeah. you have to know that where you're going is going to be so much better than where you've been. So you got to get a little uncomfortable, face that to get the reward. So what would you speak to, right? When you, when, when you don't, when you run from the pain, like I'm a big Dave, David Goggins fan, if you're, if you're familiar with, right, who he is, right? But a little bit, yeah. um, and he's pretty nuts, but um, <laughs> y- you know, it's uh to not face the pain, to, to not go through the process, there's a higher cost, a much deeper pain and cost to be paid by not going through that process. Sure. Um, yeah. Um, it causes sickness. It causes disease. I believe that the disease I was diagnosed with at 11 was the trauma I felt as a child. Wow. I mean, we caught, we, our bodies are meant to heal ourselves. And I believe when you don't step or tap into healing that, it causes sickness. It causes dis-ease. And um, it causes you to stay in a pattern, like you said, and you're just basically a hamster on a wheel, spinning the same cycle. It's the definition of insanity. So if you're not happy with your life and everything keeps going the same way, well, duh, stop running into the wall fix it. That's good. So you, you, I I read on your, on your webpage, right? You're on a mission to help people find their purpose. Right. But, but Mm -hmm. let me, because I had said it at the top of, of the podcast that you are on a mission to stop the epidemic of depression and anxiety. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that you created, I remember our first conversation, you said, well, let me send you an experience. And I was like, what the heck does that mean? Like, and you were like, I'll just send it. You'll understand it when you get it. And literally, I received an experience. So talk about how you do what you do. So I interpreted it as coaching because it really is. I mean, your book is is coaching. It is. It's just not like a. am not a coach. I really, <clears throat> I feel, again, called to reach the masses. And that's by speaking. That's by podcast. That's by the book. So again, uh, how we're like-minded, you're an influencer, right? I, I remember. I didn't know that. <laughs> What's that? I, I, I never wanted to be. That's not what I, I'm not, I wasn't, I was the girl that had the jewelry company and I, I think it was seven years before I took a picture and showed my face that I was the brand. So I couldn't even, you know, I did not like any of this stuff. This is very, Again, another challenge I had to go through was stepping out of my comfort zone and and doing this because I'm like, I don't want to do this. <laughs> I don't want to be the spotlight. But I, I, hey, who am I? I just follow the rules. All right. So well, and that and that again is is just the synergy between you and I because I remember last year I learned the same thing about about me because I was coaching people in in yeah. my former business. Um, you know, I, I thought I was supposed to be a coach in, in it with man up and in one-on-one and, and it was no, no, no. Um, because of, of being empathic, you take on who you're coaching. Right. And it wears your yeah, ass. Out. That's why I can't be a coach. <laughs> yeah. So we can speak to the masses. We can write, we can podcast, we can put the content out mm-hmm. there and mm-hmm. give people tools like exercises in a book to do. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, people got to make the choice to, to do those right. things. So Talk about your experience because I thought it was pretty awesome, right? You have, you know, where 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 you and I meet at in the book. There's exercises in the back. You took it a step far further 
and created an entire experience um, out of that. So talk about what that is for people. Sure. Um, well, as I was writing the book, I thought about, well, it's funny because I think I even texted you when you, we both were inspired by the secret. Yep. And then we both started journaling through the magic, Yep. which I'm like, this is so freaking bizarre. <laughs> um, but anyway, so yes, I started doing that. And that journaling is actually where I was able to start tapping in and start to receive the downloads and connect with God and connect with what I'm meant to do. Like that's honestly where I discovered the signs and started discovering things about energy. So that being said, what most people do because we're human and we live mainly in an ego state of mentality and, and that's our protection. Um, I, I was writing the book, but I'm like, this still isn't enough. Even if I just put exercise, it's not going to be enough. They will be inspired for a little bit, but then they're going to go right back to their old patterns. So I said, let me create a deck of cards and a journal. So there's an experience and you won't give up because I need people to learn that the journaling is really where the magic lies. Absolutely. The, the book is great but you have to keep reading it and writing or you have to write, you have to write what you're feeling, what you've receiving, what you're grateful for, because you're, you're raising your vibration to receive more of it and to get more clarity and to release whatever is stealing your peace. So the journal and the cards hold the person who's willing to take that, that move to keep them consistent. And I also covered it because we live in such a fast paced world where everybody wants instant gratification. So I try to condense this as small as quickly as possible so that you could read a chapter, let's say in five to seven minutes, um, similar to yours, right? And you can, you can pull a card because the card is an inspirational quote with exercises on it. And then the journal asks you, what was the quote, you know, can you do this exercise? I made it so simple and easy that it prompts you on everything. And um, those excuses that everybody gives on why they don't journal is just fear. And so I try to cover everything so that if you could stay consistent in this experience, you will see the results. There, I've talked about it that this concept so many times on here and and in my journey that something magical the magic right really mm -hmm. does happen when yes. pen meets paper mm -hmm. not stylus to glass ink or lead to paper there is something organic spiritual etc that happens in that process Mm -hmm. that um is life changing it really is it's it's absolutely it's and taking, yeah and taking 5 minutes a day or 15 minutes to to just sit down and do that for anybody listening that's stuck it, it is an absolute game changer well it just it holds you accountable to reflect and again it takes one's will and choice and decision that they don't like where they're at and they want to move further and you can come up with every excuse you want in the world, but at the end of the day, don't blame anybody else but yourself if you're not taking the actions you need to take. But there is magic in that. There's so much magic. Yeah. And honestly, I wouldn't, don't think any of this would be happening today had I not started or read the magic and did that. And since then, and I think it's been about 15 years, I wake up every day well almost every day i do give myself permission to take a break once in a while mm -hmm. and when i went through my little rough period i was like i'm not doing that and then when i did god gave me the signs yeah it's awesome so i want to shift um at this at this point to a conversation mm -hmm. that you and i had a couple of days ago Mm -hmm. Um, because you know, we had we had time that we were we were connecting, and I shared with you that I feel um I was off. And and you had mm -hmm. made a statement where you said, try on 
um, it's not you, but everything around you, right? It, mm -hmm. It's a little quote from West Side Story. It's not us, it's everything <laughs> around us. <laughs> but this idea um, or this understanding of battle lines being drawn really kind of came up in, in, in that conversation. Um, so I want to talk about that because we are in, in um, I don't think unprecedented is not the right word, but, you know, because, you know, there's nothing new under the sun, right? There's just cycles of it. Um, but I, I think we're in one of those cycles where things are, battle lines are being drawn at a much more heightened and, and clear level because, right, technology has allowed things to be much more transparent. Mm -hmm. So I want to talk about that. Um, that concept and what your take on it is, because uh, I just remember it being such a powerful conversation that we had. Yeah. You're seeing. Um, I believe they're biblical times, personally. I think that this is an epic time for us to be alive, honestly. Um, I don't even know where to go with all of it, but um, there's, I keep saying it's go time. It is now. And if you think that everything is cool in the world, then you have a mask on. You yeah. are blind. <laughs> okay. And I don't care. Like I said, I won't even go one way or the other. What I will say is we need to start being human to one another and treat each other with kindness and love. And we can change this ugly demonic thing that's happening in our earth right now by changing the vibration and the energy that's going on with just love. Love and light supersede darkness and evil all day long. Absolutely, but the challenge that we're having today, and I am gonna go there because oh, it, it yeah. is happening. Oh. The challenge that we're having today is that the opposition is using the very thing that you just said to push their agenda, right? It's tolerance, mm -hmm. it's love, it's acceptance, it's blah, 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 and, and that's, that's being twisted. Yes, it is. Yeah. Well, ha. Huh. You know, I mean, uh, there were some things out. Look, uh, this is the Man Up Already podcast. It's my, yeah. it, it's the views and opinions expressed I'll say what are, I'm say. are necessarily the views okay. of the host, right? right? I'm going to say <laughs> it's our fault. We felt and bought into a narrative that's been told to us and, and instilled in us for many generations, but it's gotten progressively worse over the last 30, 40, 50 years. And it all started with women empowerment. And I'm all for women empowerment. I'm a powerful woman. Okay. But that does not mean we should be diminishing men. Mm -hmm. And that's something that makes me upset. So women are powerful beings. And one thing I said to you when we met is we can do it all, run it all, have it all. It doesn't mean we want to, but this whole women thing, which again, I support women too. I've been whatever, but we need, there needs to be balance. That's why we have masculine and feminine and we have stripped masculinity from society in these last 30, 40 years. And I think men are, are lost right now because they don't know how to be men right? Women took so much control and wanted so much independence that it's like, no, it's okay to not open the door for me now. It's okay for me to pay for your date, like the date and I get to pay. And listen, by all means, you do whatever you want. But a man has hunter instincts. A man wants to provide and take care. And that should be the way that it is. And women bring love and light. And together, that creates like a beautiful unit. But I truly believe we purposefully have fallen into this narrative that everything's based on gender, skin color, so many different things. And at the end of the day, when you strip that all away, again, we are human beings. So forget whatever the hell you're watching, shut it off once and for all and tap in. Just tap in because men need to come back Men shouldn't be afraid to be men. Women shouldn't be afraid to be, to want to have a man and, or, or whatever. It's just, we need to stop this mentality because children are growing up in single homes and this is, this is all part of the thing. This is all part of the plan. And um, you need both. 
women can do it all doesn't mean we want to huh. again there's so much here as i almost choke um <laughs> <laughs> I mean, don't get me on that rant. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no, we should go on that rant because, like, I literally saw yesterday. Um, you know, if you look at what's happening in women's sports, right? And you and and I forget what the posting was, but it was something to the effect that they are erasing women, right? When you ask a Supreme Court justice what is a woman, and they can't answer, and and the scary thing is, is that not only we're erasing, we're quote unquote, erasing women because we've erased men. So now you have men trying to be women because Listen. where are they going to go, right? Like it's just well, this, this completely demonic and twisting of what you and I talk about of divine design and created purpose. Mm -hmm. We need balance. Life is about balance. There was then there, God did not create males and females. That's, that's all he created. You e are either one or the other. That's there exactly is no right. in between. There okay. is no in between. I don't, I don't need pronouns. I don't need pronouns. Right. I don't need you to call me by a, another word. But right? listen, if someone needs that, listen, I'm not going to knock anybody. But at the end of the day, you are one or the other. Okay. Period. And we need balance. I've been a single mom. I've been the mother, the father, the, I, I don't, that doesn't mean I wanted it to be that way. And I love to work. That's hard too, because we, on the opposite spectrum, need men to be able to support women who do want to do the things that I do, but not all women want to. Not, why? And then we're putting our kids in, in daycare and they're growing up in either a single family home the divorce rate, I mean, where are we at with that? That's crazy. I've been divorced twice. So, you know, no judgment. I'm just saying we lost this whole vision a long time ago. And I believe it's all, I believe it's all been a plan. And I, I, I think we need to change that. We need to unite and come back to real values, real families, real things, and learn how to communicate because at the end of the day, women have masculine sides and feminine sides. Men have masculine sides and feminine sides. But it should be, you should be able to be who you're meant to be. If you're a man and you want to provide that, that's your job. Like, that's a male instinct. Let's get back to science then, if you, for that matter, right? I mean, let's go back to the cavemen days. What did men do? Men are supposed to be protectors. Well, you want if you want to take a man out, right? It goes back to right, remove his battle, remove his adventure, right? Remove mm -hmm. all those things that are innately wired mm -hmm. into him by God, and he doesn't know where to go, so he falls apart, right? We, we it's mm -hmm. a running theme here on the show, obviously. Um, but I want to go back to where we started, which is battle lines are being drawn because you know, it, it, let me make sure I keep the thought coherent is we need we need men and women to get back to or we need to draw lines to this create idea of creative purpose now like like you you had said yeah. when we in our conversation you said john we need people to like to wake up now like god is calling out the thought leaders in this realm mm -hmm. to start putting out content and corralling people yeah. because because those battle lines are being drawn that was the, the, yes. That thing that and I believe that's head. true. And that's happening right now. And like I said, we're in a war and it's go time. So who you not like, sit around and wait perfect. anymore. So those that are sitting in, however, they're listening to this right now, what's the message to them, Sheila? Like what it's now it's go time. What does that look like for our listener? You need to figure out who you are at your core. You need to heal. You need to figure out you need to tap in and utilize that power of your mind and soul so that you can heal whatever is disturbing you and discover who you really are and who you're meant to be. Because when you do that, you are so dang powerful, you will raise your vibration. I believe one person can heal 
three to five people by their energy alone and difference just through being kind and everything else or inspire them in some way. If those three to five people do the same thing to three to five more people, do the math. Yeah, for sure. That's it. That's it. We can't allow what's happening in our world right now to continue. And the only way to stop it, love, light. And where do you get that? Heal. So it is time now to go through your storm, heal yourself, decide who you are, who you're meant to be, who you want to be, and everyone has a gift. What is it? And share it because we are here to serve. That's our job. And everyone's got some special gift that they have. And you are meant to share that in some way, shape or form. And if, and again, it doesn't need to be a big grand thing. It might just be someone needs, like I got a friend of mine who is vegan and she made these delicious, she's going, she's taking off on vegan uh, desserts, okay? She's, she found that through her grief mm. and love for baking. And again, it doesn't have to be that you run a business, but maybe it's you knit and you want to help a shelter and make some blankets for them. That's your give. So we're here to serve in some way. And just you being your best self and being kind is energy. And that energy and vibration, people don't even have to hear a word you have to say. You're going to radiate that onto them anyway. That's healing in its own. It's stopping this anxiety, stopping this depression. Because where is it coming from? I mean, the phone, the, the, the technology. And right. technology is amazing, but we're, we, we can't even live without it anymore. We can't. And that's what's destroyed it. And if your children are screwed up and lazy and don't want to do anything right now, that's, that's what happened. And are you happy with that? I mean, I'm sure nobody wanted their kids to grow up and never want to go do anything and hide in a room on a phone screen. That's not what we were raised like. I don't think that's what we want for our kids. So if you want to save your children, save yourself. I want to give the clear example of, of how you and I have the same message in male and female format. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you just did an, an incredible job of explaining, right? Like your mission for what you believe, right? Is perfect. It was perfectly. And I say this with all due respect from a feminine energy standpoint, right? Mm -hmm. Here's the male version. Get off your freaking ass and deal with your shit because we need you now to be your best self. Like, like it's just that like, like if you were to read both our books, it's the same message just in from, from different energy. I, I just love Get it. Get up already. It's, it's, but that it is right. But you're just saying it in a kinder, John Tentler, more, you, you know, it, it, <laughs> it's just, that's what I love about our connection. Cause it's the same message, right? We need you now. Like yeah. you are created for purpose and battle lines are being drawn. Like one of the reasons why the man up already growth conference is opened up to 14 year olds because we don't have time to wait six God. years for them to be 20. No. That now, conversation has to happen right now. Yep, 100%. And those kids, they're the future. Right. And I I mean, honestly, that's that's who I'm after. That's who I'm after. I'm like, you know, my, kid, my, my kids have a love-hate relationship with me. <laughs> <laughs> but I do say, get your shit together now. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never um, forget. I remember when Ozzy Osbourne had his TV show, right? When that first came out and there's, it was clearly scripted, but he had a statement that was so beautiful. He looks at his family, he goes, I love you all from the bottom of my heart. You are the meaning of my life, but you're all fucking crazy. <laughs> That's about the conversations that happen in our house. You know what? I communicate a lot with my kids. I don't shelter them. I don't, I, I literally say, this is the world guys. And you're either going to make it or you're not. And you know, my daughter struggled with depression, anxiety, all of it, all of it. And I'm like, this is disgusting. And this is because of what they're being taught in schools. This is because of what society is making. They live in a filter. 
Yep. They don't know what senses are. They don't know what intuition is. They use one to two of all of their senses. That's not what God gave them to you for. And that's what this matrix was meant to do. Dumb everybody down. And you know and manipulate. what? Yep. And manipulate. manipulate you, dumb you down, tell you what you're supposed to live your life like. Oh, Sally's happy with her happy family. And meanwhile, Sally's miserable, but she's posting happy pictures of right. her unhappy family. We live in a filter in, in this fantasy world and we need to get the hell out of it and realize the person posting all the happy, lovey, lovey, lovey things is probably miserable. But she's posting that because she gets ounces of dopamine that make her feel better. And the other person, Joan, who's looking at Sally is depressed because she doesn't have what Sally has. Get out of it. Unplug. Only when you're watching our messages, but unplug otherwise. Love. It's so funny, right? It's a cycle of psychosis um, because everybody thinks everybody's got going on something going on when really you're, 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 you're getting fed, um, bullshit, a, bullshit from a psychotic mm -hmm. essentially. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. That's and leading to more and more psychotics. So it's, it's yeah. an interesting, an interesting thing. Oh, we, we live in an entitlement world now. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. Like, again, like you just brought up this whole thing with the, the women's sports. Listen, women should be able to play sports. Great. Does it bring in money, though? No. So wh what are we doing, honestly? let There should be sports, and it should be. Not everything is going to be equal. Is everything in your life equal? No, it's not. So get over that mentality that everything's meant to be equal. We are supposed to be equal for all, but there's still a pendulum. It needs to sway back and forth, and it's never going to be here. Sometimes it's going to be a little here. Sometimes it's going to be a little here. But somewhere in that little low middle, we can't be over here and over here and think right. we're all going to unite and be loving each other. That's just right. not how it's going to work. Right. And um, yeah, I mean, especially when my daughter went through an ugly, ugly period in middle school. And I'm like, I preach this in my home and my daughter's going through this. How? Because because of do you think at 50 i wanted to be on back on social media <laughs> <laughs> i hate it yeah but i have to do it yeah you have to do it because it's the only way to reach them right agreed 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 yeah well it um i mean we could go on i say this oh, it's yeah, funny it. with we, we could go on for a while um yeah. But I love what you're up to. I love what you stand for. Um, I love the synergy that we have. I appreciate yeah. you. Um, how do people find you? Oh, well, I'm on all social media. <laughs> so you can go to my website at PowerfulMindPowerfulSoul.com. That's where you can find the full experience. Um, the book will be launching and the journal will be launching on Amazon and all platforms in maybe a week and a half to two weeks. I'll make a big announcement on that. Awesome. So it will be available everywhere. Um, but the cards and there is merchandise on my website as well. Um, on all YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, um, under Powerful Mind, Powerful Soul. Love it. Yeah. And um, I'm sure people can message and connect and, and yes. do all that. Yeah. On my website, there's there's um, places there that you can connect with me as well. Yeah. Well, I would mm -hmm. highly encourage people to read your book. Um, really, um, I love the experience um, and what you're doing. Um, but definitely, um, I think people need to read your book. Um, Thank and, you. And the more, and yeah, the more. Too. What's that? And yours too. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. they should read both. <laughs> yeah, they should. <laughs> well, they Sheila, should thank you. <clears throat> thank you so much for being a guest today. Um, I love it, right? We, we, it, it's time, you know, for lack of, you know, to the cliche, right? People do have to man up, right? They need to, to <laughs> and that women up, whatever, and, and uh -huh. get, we're drawn battle lines. We need, we need you to wake up. Wake uh, up. Wake up. Time it. is now. Time is now. I love it. Sheila, thanks so much for being a guest. Appreciate you. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks, right. John. 
You know, it's always such an honor to have such incredible guests here on the podcast. And the podcast just wouldn't be what it is without our great sponsor, Master Beef Jerky. Head on over to masterbeefjerky.com. Check out their product. It is really incredible beef jerky if you're a fan uh, like we are. It's made here in the USA. It's handcrafted. There's no MSG. It's gluten-free. It's just freaking good. Their motto is bold flavor, tender bite, and they've got flavors uh, like their original. They've got uh, smoked barbecue, Korean barbecue, Western teriyaki, sweet and spicy mango and pineapple, carne asada, garlic pepper, a Carolina Reaper flavor, and black pepper. It is good stuff. Head on over to masterbeefjerky.com, and on your order, if you put in coupon code MUAP, you will get 20% off. Master Beef Jerky, Bold Flavor, Tender Bite, and a great sponsor of the podcast. 